Uh, just before we look at that um, do nothing decision of the central bank, uh, let's um, quickly cross over to the FMDQ interbank um, currency market and, of course, see how the Naira is behaving uh, the morning after the MPC's decision. And I'm being joined uh, by uh, FX dealer with um, UBA, Chuka Mwachku. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us on the program, Chuka. Thank you very much. So give us a sense of what the interbank um, currency market is like today, a day after the MPC's decision. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, market um, has been stable. Um, the market is currently trading at a 304.5305 level. Um, um, the market, uh, the sentiment in the market was expected um, as regards the NPC result, NPC uh, pronouncement. We expected that the NPC, um, the CBN, we maintain, and so the market was already pricing. Um, presently, um, the the CBN has um, continued to intervene in the interbank market. Um, they intervene in critical sectors. Um, you know, the raw material sectors, agricultural sector, airline, as well as the petroleum sector. These are very critical sectors that um, they are looking to intervene in, and they have been doing that. All right. Thank you very much, um, uh, Chu Kamwachku, for joining, on, us on, joining us on the program. Thank you for your time. Now, in what may be described as an expected move, the Central Bank of Nigeria held its benchmark interest rate at 14% on Tuesday and kept its cash reserve ratios for commercial banks at 22.5%. Our briefing members of the media after the meeting, the CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele reiterated the need to be more inward-looking and hasten efforts towards economic diversification to support economic growth. Now, let's get the perspective of economists outside our shows on this. I'm being joined by the head economic research at ecobank international group london gaiman Donyernin. thank you very much for joining us gaiman thank you now before the central bank announced its rate decisions yesterday most economic analysts here expected a do-nothing decision was that also your expectations Absolutely. Um, it was not a surprise um, that the central bank decided to maintain the rate at 14 percent because the economy is facing um, major challenges right now. And um, the central bank is also um, facing a major policy challenges. Um, if it reduced the rates, then um, it's... Um, um, it undermines some um, real investments, which are already negative territory. And at the same time, the country is um, facing a high inflation. inflation. And if it increased the rates, um, it would have been another problem as well, because the country is already in a recession. So it, it presents a dilemma to the policymakers. And um, it also underscores that the real problem is to do with confidence, the lack of um, confidence in the markets. And, um, poor um, exchange rate, um, weak exchange rate policy, which does not appear credible. Now, well, one of the major concerns of um, businesses in Nigeria is the exchange rate policy, of course, which you've uh, just talked about. Many believe is uh, misaligned, and we've seen uh, the gap between the official and parallel market. Now, a lot of people have advocated for a change in the new FX policy. However, uh, when the central bank governor was speaking yesterday, he maintained that there is nothing wrong with his FX policy. Well, it is. It sends um, it, 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 to me, and, and I'm sure to a lot of investors, um, that is a concern because if you have such a widespread um, between the official rate and the parallel exchange rates. Um, it, it's, it shows that there's a lot of deficiencies in the market, in the, in the exchange rates, um, in the currency markets. And um, you need to close that gap or else investors will not be confident to invest in your economy because um, it doesn't offer them the price transparency that they need um, in an economy like Nigeria, which offers um, high, very high yields. Um, so that is the concern. And then on one hand, you've got the vice president, Yemi Osin Bajo, um, saying that, well, the spread will soon be narrowed. So they're sending conflicted messages to the markets. And um, it presents a lot of uncertainty, which from an investor perspective 
it's not a good thing because Nigeria needs a lot of foreign exchange inflows. And um, with the, the policymakers sending such conflicting um, signals to the markets, it undermines any prospects for any significant um, FDI or portfolio inflows in the, in the near term. Now, if you were in the shoes of um, the central bank governor, Godwin Emefile, what would you do? How would you narrow this gap between the official market and the parallel market? Well, um, the good thing is that, um, first of all, we've seen a pick up in um, oil receipts in the economy, and that has helped to to um, boost the foreign exchange in, in the inflows into the economy. But then in terms of the exchange rates, um, there's a need to devalue further. Um, the fact that we've got this large spread shows a structural problem um, with the exchange rates, the current exchange rates at the moment. So it remains tight, and so we need to allow more flexibility uh, um, in, the, in, in, in terms of the currency to help to to help the currency to reach near equi equilibrium um, and then this will help to offer investors more price transparency but until then um, I think that investors will remain um, their confidence will remain weak about the exchange rate policy and if you're coming from outside Nigeria you want to go into the markets where you're sure that if you put your money in that market you'll be able to get your money out um, as and when you like and so this is not a good thing. So there's a need to devalue the currency further. And I think that will be a, a starting point. Right. Now let's look at um, the pairs of Nigeria. Like um, we have Ghana. Of course, yesterday Ghana left its um, interest rate unchanged, even in the mix of um, the IMF credit facility saga and the new government. So how would you compare the monetary policy of these um, two largest economies in so, uh, in West Africa. It's coming out of the woods, it's got its own challenges, um, but we do not see that widespread like we see in Nigeria. So, um, and they, they, they're, they're building up their reserves, which is helping. The Central Bank of Ghana is intervening in the markets to help to, to support the currency. And that is a good thing, and we're not seeing a, a quickening um, of inflation or um, a, a, a large spread between the official rate and the parallel market rate. Um, whereas in Nigeria, it's, it means that there's deep structural problems, and that deep structural problems lies with the policies, the exchange rate policy. There's no credibility at all with the exchange rate policy, and now that we've got these two conflicting. Um, messages from both the vice president and the central bank governor it's even breeds more uncertainty in the exchange rate market in the in the front in into into investors and so as a result of that you are likely to see any major inflow in investments um in, in into nigeria or portfolio inflows into the economy and this will continue to constrain economic activity so the source of the some of the the, the problems the source of it lies with the exchange rate policy and um we the, the gap needs to be narrowed and the higher um oil receipts does not help will not be adequate um to 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 narrow that gap more has to be done from the policy side, both All the right. exchange rates as well as the fiscal side. All right. Thank you very much um, for your time, Gaimin. Uh, that was Gaimin Nonyernin, Head Economic Research at Ecobank International Group, London. Well, it's in that note that we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimidu Obi. Welcome.